Did you know that insect damage dates back 300 million years ago, shown on fossilized leaves? Compared to ground-dwelling and aquatic insects, insects that feed on living tissues above ground have new problems that arises different adaptations. First, a phytophagous insect must be able to hold on to the vegetation. Second, the exposed insect is subject to greater desiccation. Third, a diet of plant tissue is not as nutritious as microbes or other animals. And fourth, plants have developed their own defenses to ward off insects such as modified leaves and chemical defenses. Despite all these barriers, about half of all living insect species feed on plants. I'm Dr. DeBus and in this video I'm going to talk about the interactions of insects and their plant hosts. The term coevolution is used to describe cases where two or more species reciprocally affect each other's evolution. For example, an evolutionary change in the morphology of a plant might affect the morphology of an insect that eats the plant, which in turn might affect the evolution of the plant, which might affect the evolution of the insect, and so on. Plants and insects represent a classic case of coevolution, one that is often but not always mutualistic. Many plants and their pollinators are so reliant on one another and their relationships are so exclusive that biologists have good reason to think that the match between the two is the result of coevolutionary process. Figs and fig wasps are a good example of this. Female fig wasps enter the syconium, which is more inverted flower than fruit, with the goal of laying eggs in the seeds. After the female makes it into the flower, she loses her wings and eventually dies. Male capra figs, male flowers, are perfectly shaped to hold the eggs. Although sometimes the female goes into edible female flowers that she pollinates, but the stylus is too long to oviposit. The larvae of the capra figs form galls. The male wasps emerge first from the galls, fertilize the females while in the galls, and dig escape tunnels for their mates and die. And in the edible fig, the mom and the male babies are digested as protein. Are the crunchy parts of figs pieces of wasp? No, they are actually just seeds. Let's get into some of these issues that pests deal with when it comes to plants. Usually the tissue with the highest nutritional value are the most defended by the plant, such as young shoots or leaves. Pests often eat more to compensate for a lower quality diet. In sap-sucking insects such as aphids or spittlebugs, bacterial symbionts in their gut can convert non-essential amino acids to essential amino acids. They also process enormous quantities of plant fluids to meet their nutritional needs. Insects may feed on one plant species a few or many, although an insect may have different preferences in different times during their development. Plants have a variety of defenses. Physical defenses include spines or hairs on stems and leaves, silica or sclerenchyma in leaf tissue, or leaf shapes that camouflage. Plants may produce chemicals such as essential oils, tannins, or allele chemicals to repel an insect or inhibit feeding or oviposition. Some insects are adapted to the chemicals, such as the monarch butterfly, which oviposits on milkweed plants that contain toxic glycosides, another example of coevolution. Secondary plant compounds deter herbivores, or at least reduce the suitability of many plants. Depending on the plant, such chemicals may be present in their foliage at all times, or in some plant parts, or in some parts during development, such as during new leaf development. This provides continuous protection, at least against non-adapted insects. If the defense takes too much energy from the plant, some plants can turn on their defenses only when, in, when insect feeding occurs, called induced defense. This may be short or long term. A direct defense would be the production of chemicals, but those chemicals may also attract predators and parasitoids. Neighboring plants may even eavesdrop through endomycorrhizae, allowing another plant to raise its defenses. The damage caused by leaf chewing insects is easily seen compared to many sap sucking insects. The most diverse groups of leaf chewing insects are Lepidoptera larvae and Coleoptera adults and larvae. Other important groups include Orthoptera and sawflies, Hymenoptera. Examples include gypsy moths that severely defoliate north temperate forests. 
When monitoring leaf chewing insects, methods rely on estimating leaf area lost. The leaves of different plant species vary in their suitability as insect food due to variations in nutrient and water content, type and concentration of secondary plant compounds, and degree of leaf toughness. These differences can be due to different taxa, maturity of the leaves, growing conditions, or the plants sampled. More specialized insects may cause more damage than journalists. Leaf miners lie between two epidermal layers of a leaf, and their presence can be detected externally after the area they have fed upon dies. The damage may appear as tunnels, blotches, or blisters. Tunnels may be linear or serpentine, and often widen as they get bigger. These flattened larvae can belong to Diptera, Lepidoptera, Coleoptera, or Hymenoptera. The most common are larval flies and moss. You can often see their excretory material, frass, left in the mine as black or brown pellets. Leaf miners can cause economic damage by attacking the foliage of fruit trees, vegetables, ornamental plants, and forest trees. The citrus leaf miner has spread around the world. The adult is kind of cute, but you never see that. Not even the larvae, normally just the aftermath. Let's talk about boring. No, I'm not talking about my presentation. Boring involves insects that feed deep in the plant tissues and include larvae that feed in buds, fruits, nuts, seeds, roots, stalks, and wood. Stalk borers, such as wheat stem sawflies and European corn borer, attack grasses and more succulent plants. Wood borers feed into roots, twigs, stems, and or trunks of living woody plants where they meet the bark, phloem, sapwood, or heartwood. The wood boring habit is typical of many coleoptera such as jewel beetles and weevils and some lepidoptera and hymenoptera. Many insects damage plant storage organs by boring into tubers, corms, and bulbs. Some of the most effective biological control agents for weedy plants are specialist wood boring insects, such as larvae of the flea beetle on invasive ragwort. The reproductive output of many plants is reduced or destroyed by the feeding activities of larvae that bore in, into and eat the tissues of fruits, nuts, and seeds. Fruit borers include diptera like the Mediterranean fruit fly, Lepidoptera like the codling moth, and Coleoptera like the plum curculio. Structural damage caused by sap sucking insects is often inconspicuous as the withdrawal of cell contents from plant tissues usually leaves the cell walls intact. Sap suckers drain plant resources by removing phloem or xylem contents, causing reduced growth, fewer leaves, or less overall biomass. Certain sap sucking insects cause necrotic tissue by transmitting diseases, especially viruses, or by injecting toxic saliva. Others cause leaf distortion or galls. Most sap sucking insects belong to Hemiptera. Their long thread-like mouth parts has a salivary canal directing saliva into the plant and a food canal through which plant juice or sap is sucked up. The feeding site may include parenchyma such as immature scales and many true bugs, the phloem, for example, most aphids, mealybugs, soft scales and leafhoppers, or the xylem, for example, spittlebugs and cicadas. Many species are serious agricultural and horticultural pests. Movement between host plants lead to efficient transmission of plant viruses, especially by aphids and whiteflies. The sugary waste, honeydew, is eliminated from the anus of phloem feeding hemiptera and is used by black sooty mold, which contaminates leaves and fruits and impairs photosynthesis. They are often guarded by ants that use honeydew as a carbohydrate source. Some sap suckers are gall inducing. Thrips feed by penetrating the tissues using their stylets, then rupture individual cells below, discoloring the leaf, bud, flower, or shoot. Insects-induced plant galls result in a very specialized type of insect-plant interaction in which the morphology of the plant parts is altered. Galls are defined as pathologically developed cells, tissues, or organs of plants that have risen by hypertrophy or hyperplasia, cells increasing in size or number respectively, as a result of stimulation from foreign organisms. Galls are induced by viruses, bacteria, fungi, nematodes, and mites, but insects cause many more. Gall-forming insects include mainly orders Hemiptera, Diptera, and Hymenoptera. 
Galls are initiated on young leaves, flower buds, stems, and roots, and rarely on mature plant parts. Their feeding and secretions control the gall formation. Often the release of hormones such as auxins and cytokinins. Insects feed on gall tissue, which is higher in nutrients. Plant seeds usually contain higher levels of nutrients than other tissues, providing for the growth of the seedling. Specialist seed-eating insects use this resource. Harvester ants are ecologically significant seed predators. Although seed fragments are fed to larvae, many seeds germinate quickly in ant nests. Therefore, ants aid in dispersal and provide local nutrients to the seedling. Some very hard seeds produce food bodies called eliosomes with chemical attractions that stimulate ants to collect them. The eliosome is removed and fed to larvae. An array of beetles develop entirely within individual seeds or consume several seeds within one fruit. Rice weevils are stored product pests of corn, wheat, rice, and other plants. The hose-nosed weevil uses her exceedingly long snout to drill a hole deep into a psychic cone. Sexual reproduction in plants involves pollination, the transfer of pollen from the anthers of a flower to the stigma. It is advantageous to the plant for its pollinators to be specialist visitors that faithfully pollinate only flowers of one or a few species. This is common for orchids. Some orchids are pollinated only by euglossian bees that attract males collecting a fragrance used in the bee's reproductive behavior. Consequently, the pollen gets stuck to him. The major flower frequenting taxa include beetles, flies, wasps, bees, and ants thrips, and butterflies and moss. The insects visit flowers primarily to obtain nectar and or pollen. Nectar consists primarily of sugars, while pollen has high protein content plus sugar, starch, fat, and traces of vitamins and salts. Some flowers don't attract insects through food, but mimic insect mates. Again, another orchid. Beetles visit white or dull-colored, strong-smelling, and regularly bowl or dish-shaped flowers while flies visit less showy flowers with a strong, stinky smell. Butterflies and moths often pollinate regular tubular sweet-smelling flowers. Moths prefer light-colored flowers that open at night, while butterflies prefer red, yellow, or blue upright flowers. Bees, especially the honeybee, are regarded the most important insect pollinators. They collect nectar and pollen for themselves and their brood. Plants that depend on bees have bright, sweet-smelling flowers with nectar guides, only visible under ultraviolet light on the petals that direct pollinators to the nectar. Many bees collect pollen in pollen baskets or corbicula on their hind legs. Bees differ between species in the amount of pollen they are able to collect and carry in one foraging trip, which may require visits to multiple flowers, as well as the amount of pollen needed to provision a nest cell. Dematia, little houses, may be hollow stems, tubers, swollen petioles, or thorns, which are used by ants either for feeding or as nest sites or both. True dematia are cavities that form independently of ants. Ant plants, or myrmecophytes, often are trees, shrubs, or vines on the understory of tropical lowland rainforests. Ants benefit from the association with myrmecophytes by having shelter and readily available food. Food comes either directly from the plant through food bodies or extra floral nectaries or indirectly via honeydew producing hemipterans living within the domatia. The plants receive protection from predators or obtain nutrients through the ants' waste. Many plants support insect communities and structures that retain water. The containers formed by water retained in the leaf axles of many bromeliads, gingers, or rot holes of trees have no benefit to the plants. Pitcher plants have a complex architecture designed to lure and trap insects, which are digested in the container liquid. Pitcher plants generally live in nutrient-poor soils. The odor, color, and nectar entice insects, predominantly ants, into modified leaves, the pitchers. Guard cells and slippery walls prevent exit so the prey cannot escape and it drowns in the pitcher liquid that contain digestive enzymes. A few specialist insects can live above the liquid and many more larvae live within without being killed. Mosquito and midge larvae are the most common but other fly larvae, odonates, spiders, and even a stib mining ant 
has a mutualistic relationship with pitcher plants. They digest trapped prey and defecate nutrients for the plants. In conclusion, through coevolution, many insects have developed a relationship with their plant host. Pests have developed a variety of strategies to overcome plant issues, making them successful at feeding on plants.